note or any of these bankers, any of these suicides actually. And to commit suicide in such an open way without leaving a note seems puzzling and it's not adding up for the experts either. Now, it could very well be that these bankers all just committed suicide, but perhaps they also knew too much. Now, British think tanks are predicting a financial catastrophe for the U.S. They're entitling it the government debt iceberg, saying, you know, we, we think we owe $17 trillion to debtors, but it's more like $120 trillion when you get legit with the accounting. And we've interviewed many financial analysts who are predicting a major financial crisis looming for the United States. But rather than address that, rather than address the issues with the economy, Obama is figuring out even more ways to siphon off taxpayer dollars and give it to the globalists. This time, Obama has proposed another rule change to the Affordable Care Act. This one will allow insurers to keep an additional 2% of premiums for purposes other than medical care. Now, this is supposedly to cover higher administrative costs in 2015. So basically what this could result in is higher out-of-pocket costs for the consumers solely for the benefit of the insurance industry, basically forcing Americans through tax penalties to give insurance companies an even greater percentage of their premiums for costs that aren't even related to medical care, more for their fees and less for what they'll actually pay out for your health care. So once again, it is not affordable health care. It is health insurance that ensures your money is going to be going to the globalists. Please show Obama how much you approve and support his Affordable Care Act at the voting booth this year. Now, stick around because Alex Jones is going to be speaking with Harry S. Dent Jr. He has some pretty explosive predictions for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Here's the headline out of CNBC. Get ready for the Dow at 16,000 by 2016, says a pro. And he broke that down with them a few weeks ago, so I wanted to get him on. I really appreciate him coming on HarryDent.com. And he wants to get into 2014, the year of defaults for China, and Germany falls off the Democrat. 
demographic cliff and how that affects us here and when we hit our baby boomer demographic cliff and more. Mr. Dent, thanks for coming on. Nice to be here, Alex. Well, break it down for us. Well, first off, I'd like to cover this Dow at 6,000 by 2016 and then get into the demographic cliff. Well, you know, I'll explain other reasons, but there's a big pattern in the stock market that should be more obvious to people. We've seen three bubbles now, one that peaked in 2000 and 2007, and then now each bubble has gone to new highs, but each crash in between has gone to new lows. So this, this is called a megaphone pattern. It's, it's a very similar pattern to how the stock market peaked the last time a generation peaked in the late 60s, early 70s. There were three tops at higher highs and then a big crash in 73, 74. This would project that the Dow is going to hit about 17,000 in the next couple of months, and then it's going to fall in the next couple of years to just below 6,000. So that's a bigger crash than last time. That's like a 65% drop. So this is not something you should listen to your stock broker and say, oh, just, just stay the course, uh, stocks will come back. When stocks have peaked with major generational spending peaks, like in 1929 and 1968, stocks have, did not get back to those levels for 24 to 25 years. So we're in, I think, for the largest uh, downturn in our life. It's going to be very much like the 1930s, what I call a big debt detox. Uh, so, so people really need, uh, you know, I, I, I actually took a 70% cut in my advance from my publisher to get the demographic clip book out early this year because I, I think we're close to a top here. And I think people need to make some very hard decisions. I agree. I want to talk about that book uh, again, but expanding on this. You're not the only analyst saying this, and we see governments creeping towards the pension funds, uh, both the public and private, the IRAs, all of it. They're going to, quote, save it, I guess, when the plunge comes by taking it over and taxing it. Seems to be what they're openly saying they're going to do. I don't think a lot of this is hidden, but I'm not hearing a larger discussion of it. Well, you know, I mean, uh, people should be worried. I mean, taxes are going to have to go up. The government has promised entitlements it can never, ever, ever pay, especially in a difficult economy that I'm painting and seeing for the next six to 10 years. Uh, our population forecasts are much higher than, than they're going to actually be. Births are falling. Immigration falls in times like this. And this is what happened in the 1930s. So, so yeah, people, I mean, taxes are going to go up in all different types of ways, and especially more affluent people, if you don't protect your wealth from this bubble burst and protect your wealth from taxes, uh, you're going to be in for a big surprise in the, in the next several years. I want to get more into that and what your book breaks down, uh, the technicals, but specifically, how would you protect your wealth for the average person? Well, you know, here, here's the thing to understand that we warn people about. This is only happens once in a lifetime. It's a bubble boom bursting, a debt bubble bursting. And when that happens, all financial assets go down. And all you have to do is go back and look at the crash in 2008. Stocks went down here and around the world, large cap, small cap, Asia, Europe, emerging countries. Uh, real estate went down. Commodities went down. Gold and silver went down. And everybody was told, well, you can protect yourself with gold and silver, not in a deflationary crash, an inflationary recession or crisis like the 1970s. Gold and silver was great. It will not do well in this. So you basically have to take your profits off the table, get safe. I mean, you can short the markets if you want, but that takes some guts and that's risky. But if you just get in safe investments, when everything falls, you're going to be able to buy stocks, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents on the dollar. I mean, real estate, 30, 40 cents on the dollar and, and, and everything else. So, so that's the trick. That's what Joseph Kennedy did. In the Great Depression, he got out of the stock market at the top when a shoeshine boy was telling him to buy stock. He said, oh, man, this thing's got to be over. Same thing. I had every cab driver giving me Internet tips in late 99. I knew that one was about over. And then he just bought when things were down and he made a fortune. That's right. And, and so it's an opportunity for those that are positioned uh, yeah. beforehand. Looking at that, though. Uh, obviously, they're, they're, there's a race uh, devaluing currencies, and I guess the establishment thinks, well, if there's actually a depressionary thing coming, that will somehow balance out. How does the inflation on the dollar and other currencies then tie into a uh, deflationary situation uh, in the rest of the economy? Well, you know, you know, the one thing, Alex, deflation is good for the dollar. When we started to deflate and debt started to deleverage in late 2008, the U.S. dollar went up 27 percent. It was the only thing that did go up versus other currencies. Now, the reason this happens, people don't understand, and this is, this is something we have to argue with the gold bugs about constantly, but the U.S. dollar fell 
58 percent from 1985 at, at its high in the Reagan era down to the beginning of this recession in early 2008 where it bottomed. 58 percent. The reason is we created massive amounts of debts, trade deficits, and now QE on top of that. We've created massive amounts of money, and that devalues, that debases the currency. We debase the dollar in the boom. When you get this bubble burst, when debt deleverages, you're destroying money. When when financial assets go and a Dow goes from six seventeen thousand to six thousand, that is destroying two thirds of people's wealth in the stock market overnight. Less dollars chasing the same goods is the definition of deflation, and that's how you get deflation. But less dollars also means they're more scarce, and we're we're reversing the debasement of our. Uh, our currency. So really, this this crisis is exactly what would put the dollar back in balance, would make real estate more affordable sure. for young families again, stocks better long-term investments, all this sort of stuff. We need this reset, and governments just don't want it to happen because nobody wants the music to stop uh, in the, on their chair. You know, everybody wants the crisis to hit the next administration. Sure. So central banks and, and, and politicians around the world just keep printing money to cover over the crisis, keep the banks from falling over. The banks would have gone under a lot of them. We would have, we had a 1930s scenario building. And you know what? As bad as the 30s were, we had a huge debt detox. And we basically cut the debt from 190% of GDP in this country to 60% in, in, in the next several years. And that allowed us to grow again. A 30-year so boom. 30-year boom. Yeah. Yeah, an incredible boom to follow that. We came roaring out of it. We're not coming out of this. I cover in chapter two in the book, I talk about the J Japan coma economy. Japan has been doing this QE stuff since 1997 when they went off their demographic cliff. And I was one, one of the only people in the world that predicted the downturn of Japan in 1989. Um, and, and they've been doing QE ever since. They have not uh, deleveraged their sure. debt. They have not rebalanced their economy. Sure. I mean, so I mean, undoubtedly, you're right. That's why they call you, you know, top pro in CNBC. But let's just expand on this then in, in layman's terms for folks. What with, with what the global policies are right now versus what we think they should be, what do you see happening the next few years? Does this happen overnight? Does it happen in a process? I mean, I know, I know you, generally, I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but but what do you see happening? Well, we, we do kind of have a crystal ball. We predicted this downturn, Alex, by the way, my first book in 1989. We predicted the simultaneous collapse of Japan in the 90s and the greatest boom in history and the greatest stock market surge in history for the United States and Europe. What we do is we look at demographics. People enter the workforce age 20, earn and spend more money raising their kids and families, buying houses, borrowing money, and they peak at age 46. Now, everybody doesn't, but the average person spends the most money in their life at age 46. So the simplest indicator I have of many, but it is, I call it the spending way, we just move forward the birth index in any developed country and, and move it forward 46 years for that peak in spending where people will have the highest impact, the highest numbers. And that would have told me, and it did tell me in 1988, that we had a boom from 1983 with baby boomers that was going to last until about 2007, and then the baby bust would slow down our economy, less spending, less house buying, less borrowing, all those things until about 2023. So we predicted these demographic headwinds and that we would go into a crisis starting in 2008 just with demographic. But, but there's another factor that's equally important. We've seen the greatest debt bubble, which then in turn fueled the greatest real estate bubble in modern history. Debt got up to about four times GDP in this country versus 190% at the top of the roaring 29 bubble, so twice as much debt. And that doesn't count $67 trillion in unfunded entitlements. Well, that's my question. How do those two bubbles collapsing go together? They go down at the same time? or Yeah. Well, well that, that's what happened. At some point when, when this QE doesn't work or something triggers, like, like last time, the subprime crisis in the U.S. triggered stock crashes and, and debt crises around the world. Because all it takes is a trigger when demographics are slowing and debt is, is twice as high as it's ever been in history and four times if you count entitlements. All it takes is something to pop the bubble.